Welcome, welcome, welcome. It is Saturday morning, so you know it's time for another live edition of the Extra Points. You see all of the squares are filled today on this special holiday edition of the Extra Point. It is Rivalry Week, and uh, it is time to talk some football. There's no better guest to have to, to break down these games than the three people you're looking at right now. We got two Michigan fans in Notre Dame who happened to hold the fate of the college football playoffs in their tightly bound fist today. How they perform on the field today will have a direct impact on who wins the national championship. So with that being said, we're going to get to our sponsors so we can get this thing rolling. T-Sizzle. We are sponsored by May Jane's Coffee. That's M-A-E-J-A-N-E-S coffee.com. You can get your Colombian and your whiskey blend coffee freshly ground and shipped to you by my lovely daughter, Denise. Denise, again, that is May Jane's Coffee, M-A-E-J-A-N-E-S coffee.com. Thank you for your support. Awesome. And the extra point is also brought to you by wolverine comics wolverine underscore comics tx uh we buy sell and trade all of your comics if you haven't watched that um new wakanda forever movie black panther 2 if you want to call it uh go watch it it's really good um and if you have any questions hit me up hit that man up on all of these social media streaming devices he got you covered to make james coffee some wolverine comics and you set now let's get to it we got a Notre Dame fan here. We got Michigan fans here. We got two of the winningest programs in the history of college football <laughs> with everything on the line. We got the college football playoffs just a few weeks away, and we have the regular season finale for all of the, the playoff hopefuls. So with that being said, let's just start here. We've done a lot of, of pontificating and analyzing what we think will happen in the college football playoffs, as you see the teams that are listed before us. But today I want to flip it. I want you to put on your fan hat today since both of our teams are in high-profile games. Let's see who you would like to see in the playoffs. Mike, I'm going to start with you. Who who would be your ideal scenario for the reasonable uh, picks that we can have, the, the, the most reasonable possibilities? Who would you like to see in the Final Four? So <clears throat> this is based off of, like, what, what I would like to see, not what I think is going to happen. Right, uh, I right, would right. honestly like to see. I want. I want to see four, four of the Power Five uh, champions face off against each other and just call it a day. I want to see SEC in there. Um, that's that's where we get a little iffy. You got to have the Big Ten in there. Um, Big Twelve, like eh, okay, like if TCU can hold it out, I think they would. They might play Texas. Um, that's a whole big. Kansas, yeah, Kansas State. They need, they they need some help in there, Kansas right? Um, so, I mean, USC would be in there. So, I want to see those schools in there just because – and I know it's going to probably be a, bud, a bloodbath um, in most of those games, but at least you'll be able to see the caliber and rank everyone. You know, like well, it is what it is. Right, right. right. So, that's what, that's what I would want to see. Coop, welcome back. Coop DeVille. What up? What up? What up? All right, you got on your fan hat. You're sitting there. It's, it's it's New Year's Eve, and the college football playoff games are about to get cranking. Who would you like to see? What matchups would you like to see as a fan? I I would like to see the. Uh, I would like to really see Georgia, Michigan, and probably a Ohio State TCU. And, and the only big, only reason I say that is I'm not. I think that's how it's going to end. I'm not sold on Michigan playing in the playoffs, but I would like to see them get, get another shot at an SEC school. And I would really love or Ohio State play somebody. Like those two schools, we need to see them play somebody because they don't have anybody to play in their conference right now. So we really need to see those two schools. That's why I really would like to see both of those teams make it just so we can see them match up against somebody else, Coach. It's kind of hard to judge them when they play 10 weeks against nobodies and, and all of their eggs have, have to be showed up today. And it's really not fair to those two teams because if they if either one of them don't show up today, everybody's going to cancel out their whole season. And it's really not fair, but, hey, that's how it goes. That's exactly and, how it and, goes. And I was looking at today, don't be surprised about the USC. Uh, Clemson may slide in. 
Because I'm not sold on TCU winning out. And what do you do then? And they're going to play, uh, what, North Carolina? North Carolina lost to North Carolina State yesterday. So whoever they play on their side in their championship game, it's, it's even worse. Right. I and mean, they may lose to South Carolina today, but I think South Carolina shot all their guns last week. So I don't, I don't think they're going to show up this week. But they scored 63 on UT. That's a lot. And then you expect them to come back in a rivalry game. And that's a high that you really can't come down on after beating the number, what, five, six-ranked team in the nation. But – and, and don't don't uh, look again, but you still have old Alabama lurking back there with these teams. So no, we're gonna sh- we're no, gonna stop you right there, Coop. Nah, we're gonna stop on. you right there, Coop. Hey, Alabama stuff. I'm just telling. Just look at this now. It, it's a today is a potential upset day, and you look at Notre Dame's gonna beat USC. The LSU's going to lose. I mean, what do they do? Do they let? I mean, what? Like, hey, you see, Mike. You see what he did there. He reeled us in with the I want two Big Ten teams in. I knew there was a catch. As long, but then he won't slide Alabama back in on us after we thought yeah. we put a stake through their heart a few weeks ago. Uh, Tasha, what would you like to see in the playoffs? What I would really like to see on January 9th of 2023 is Michigan and Fresno State playing for the championship. Okay. Fresno just- State. <laughs> hey, you asked you me. You got to get a title anyway. The realistic. <laughs> Realistic and, possibilities, Sasha. <laughs> realistically, I would like to see USC in there. I would not want to see the FIs there. I want them gone. Um, so I would I wouldn't mind seeing a Georgia, Michigan, USC, and I don't I mean, I don't know. Maybe it's just a regional bias, and I really don't watch TCU ball that much. I don't really want to see them. Right. I would, That's fair. You know, I really That's don't fair. want to see. Damn. So, I mean, I would, I would like to see, to be honest, LSU play. I, you know, I just kind of like, you know, kind of what they're doing towards the end of the year. But I believe I'm with Cooper. I believe they're going to lose. I picked them, pick A and M because A and M, like I say, skating without a stick. A and M has right. nothing. And, and all 15 people that'll be in that in A and M stadium. <laughs> Right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. All 12, and then that's the 12 man when they do this little rock. Okay, we done did our rock, we going home now. <laughs> yeah. Nice, nice. Um, so let's just get right to it. The game that, that's gonna really really the playoff start in about an hour when yeah. Michigan goes to the orthopedic shoe to face the Ohio State suck eyes. Now, let's 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 go here. Cool, since you're the non-Big Ten person. Who was under more pressure today, Coach Harbaugh or Coach Ryan Day? Oh, Ryan Day, after last year getting manhandled, it's definitely Day. I mean, Harbaugh did his thing. He got to his one playoff. And it's still a lot of pressure on him because understanding that rivalry, that this is the game of all games. But I think Day, the way they got pushed around and smashed for better athletes, he has to come back and show that uh, not only they're the better team, but he's the better coach. So I, I think all the pressure is on Ohio State. And when you're looking at this game, the game is going to be won inside the 20. Who can score in the red zone? Both teams have struggled all season scoring in the red zone. So it's, it's all about everybody can get to the 20, but what can you do? Field goals, you can't, we're not cutting. And if it's that type of game, Ohio State will lose a field goal type of game. They have to make this a shootout because they have the better athletes. They but do. If and if it does uh, become a field goal up, game, huh? No, I'm saying if it does become a field goal game, Michigan has the best field goal kicker in the nation. Yeah, that's because he's kicked 95. I mean, they. <laughs> <laughs> did you notice that? Hey, they, they got a stat. He's, he's, he's also 35, so. <laughs> <laughs> he is. He's older than, uh, than, he's older than the, the quarterback in QT. All right, but yeah, Coop Coop has a good point. I I agree with him. That's crazy. I I agree with him that it's definitely Ryan Day. And I I think it's on top of that, you know, Harbaugh calling him out and pretty much saying, like, you pretty much got that team. You didn't really do anything. And now it's starting to fade because your coaching is is needed. And he pretty much said, like, a lot of people on third base think they got triples. So he pretty much called him out, like, nah. The, hey, now, you're coaching, what, now you're coaching is stepping or showing in, in your trash. Remember what Tasha was saying last year prior to the big game, that Ryan Day was really 
it was really just a, a figurehead that it was really um, um urban meyer urban that was, meyer. That urban urban meyer. Meyer. tasha you still yeah. feel that way you, you think he's under the most pressure um i think so too uh especially and i mean we talked about this off camera november 28th uh 19 i mean 1916 2016 that bogus ass first down call. He got stopped. Right. He got you stopped. Know, we all know what happened with that. Right. Um, that's when we really kind of was like, wait a minute. We, you know, we got to start doing this. If y'all keep saying Ryan Day, I think it's kind of hardball as well because he has talked so much trash. We have not won in what I call the 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 SH. Blank shoe. The toilet bowl. <laughs> since, Good job by you, Tasha. Since like what early 2000? When was the last time we, we won? I, I think it was 03, 04. Yeah, yeah it's been a long time. Like time. So I think the pressure is on Harbaugh to go in there and say, hey, we can win, we can beat them on their turf. It's not just we have to beat them when we're in the big house. All right, let's go to the quarterback position because this is an interesting matchup between between CJ Stroud. And JJ McCarthy, Stroud on one hand, he's going to be one of the, the few quarterbacks if he loses today. This goes over against Michigan. I can't think of another quarterback that went over against Michigan because he will go in the draft this spring. Then yeah. you look at JJ McCarthy. JJ McCarthy was on a team that beat Ohio State when he was the backup quarterback. He beat out the starter in Cade McNamara, who did get the win and the Big Ten championship. Mike, which quarterback is under more pressure today? Uh, Stroud or McCarthy? Well, it was definitely Stroud. Stroud mm -hmm. looked horrible last year. And, I mean, it was just a little bit of snow. It wasn't even like a blizzard. It was just like right. it's there. Right. It went um, Orchard Park last week. <laughs> and it, it, it just it just looked like he didn't feel confident back there. I mean, it, it was we had a lot of uh, good defensive uh, players in Michigan last year. Um, but it's just going to be it's – a, it's a different – Michigan speed this year and I would say they're not big anymore um they're not gonna push you around uh they got a lot more speed so I, I you're really gonna see what kind of NFL quarterback he's gonna be um and I think this is gonna be a good test for him Mike we already know what kind of NFL quarterback he's gonna be be just, nice just like, just like the rest of them <laughs> See, out of all those quarterbacks they put in the league, the only one that we kind of still talking about is Fields. Yeah, he's slow. And you're not even sold on Fields, too? <laughs> no, nah, he's slow. Damn. All right, so let's get, right so to, let, let's get right to it, Tasha. Who wins the game today in the orthopedic shoe? See, they got me in the middle of dressing. All right, come on. And they, they see, let me show you some people. Do y'all see this? Pay no attention to them sideburns and that beard. But look at this. <laughs> <laughs> you see this? <laughs> you see this? <laughs> <laughs> and my lovely friend, I have to shout out an early shout out. My lovely friend Jackie bought me this here blanket. Jackie <laughs> is a FI fan. She got this for me for Christmas one year because she loved me so much. Mm. So there is no question who I'm rooting for. I don't give a damn if we were 0 and 10. Okay. Speak your mind and tell your truth. It's going to always be that maize and blue. Mike, how do we get it done today? I know you're picking Michigan, but how does Michigan get it done today? I think it's going to come down to JJ. I think we saw clearly when we put everything on our running backs, what happens. I think we're running them too hard right now, and it's showing. Yes. So we got to get have a, a better balance. And I think J it's all going to come down to JJ if he can make those wide open throws. Because yeah, didn't I, I, I mean I know if you all were like me, didn't you didn't you lose your breath when Quorum went out? I was right. Yeah. Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because our, really our backup did. was out, too. So it was like, man, what are we going to do? Then, then you, you start seeing uh, J.J. start throwing those passes just like. He was like, YOLO. Yeah. <laughs> After looking like Garoppolo, m minus the. the hey, wait NFL. a minute. Garoppolo threw four TDs. Don't get us started on the NFL just yet. He was he looking four like TDs. Garoppolo minus the interceptions for at one point. I said, oh, this boy got his eyes open. Are you putting a Garoppolo <laughs> on me? Look, mm -hmm. I'm riding with AP Coulter. I'm riding with AP Coulter coming live from the Coulter console here. 
we going blue over here. Now, we saved Coop for last because he's going to be like Ali Corso today with the headgear. <laughs> what headgear are you putting on? You putting on Bucky? What are you putting on today? Hey, y'all just <laughs> said everything for the making of Michigan. See, that's why that's why you it's just my said you're going to put everything. <laughs> you just said you're going to put everything on this freshman quarterback in the biggest game of his life, going against the best defense he's faced all season with no run game <laughs> against a defensive end, power team that speed rushes up the field. Mm -mm. This won't be pretty. Let me tell you one thing. Wait a minute, won't be pretty? You, you said won't be pretty, Tasha. You know. He wrong about the best. He practiced against the best defense last year, and he practiced against one of the practice. top this year. You just said practice. Push them FIs you right just, off. He played you against in Georgia. Practice. Against Georgia. We, we already – I'm, I'm going to explain this real nicely. You just told me your best player on your team, Corm, is not going to be 100%. Oh, no, 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 no. He's 100, boo boo. He's 100. Yeah, he's, no, he's 100%. No, he's not. He didn't come back last week in that game. He's Why? Not 100%. Yeah, because of this Why? game. He knows the <laughs> no, 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 no. game. You needed last week bad. You you got out of No, last we didn't. On your no. last chin and chin chin. No. No. I, what you mean you needed him this you, week? You needed you him last week. Fucking them dumb. All you want to with your you perfect needed him last week. week. Beard. You keep bumping them bombs, Coop. They, that, that boy ain't, he ain't scared. He ain't Ohio shaking State. his boots behind no FI defense. Man, he just told me about oh, practice. Man. I ain't talking about no practice. They can't touch I don't care, but he, know, he knows don't what top he tier defense looks you like. He ain't, he ain't scared. He ain't scared. <laughs> Everyone keeps calling him a freshman, yeah. though. I mean, he played against Georgia, too. Mike, that's not a good example. Let's not. No. Let's not break well, he still door. did. He still but did he though. He played against Georgia, and what did he do? He got smashed. Like that. Right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's how you learn. Like, come and, on. And, and, oh, that is how you learn. Right, you got to right. take your lumps, Coop. All I say is, I would not want to go in this game without a running attack. You need a running attack in this game because that is true. That is true. That's what slows Ohio State down. If you're going to keep passing and keep putting this guy out there and making him make plays, I'm not I'm not thinking that's what you want him to do. You want to be able to use that corn with the play-action pass to open up because I'm not sold on all our states back four. But their front seven is where all the meat is at. So I like him having a run game so he can do some play-action pass, get him out on the edge, and play that way. But without a running game and then when Ohio State knows you can't run, that changes the game, guys. But that worries me. Go no, that, that does worry me. I've, I've been worried about McCarthy for the last four games. Yeah. Like, no, we've talked about that offline. But I don't think their front seven can stop Michigan's run game. No. They can't. They don't have a running back. That's what I'm asking. I, I'm every team, out. every team is putting points on this this defense. So look, the, the if Tua's little brother can put up 30 on them, I feel pretty confident our offensive Thank line should be able to give JJ right. enough time. <laughs> <laughs> right. And now you got, I'm supposed to be impartial right here, but damn it, I got all my Michigan gear, and it's the big game, and you're stressing me out. Cool. And we got a really good offensive line, too. So, And nobody's talking about Michigan's defense. Now, now hey, we all I know that. that, that they've only given up 17 points against everybody if they face, but they've only played three junior pro teams and two <laughs> NAIA teams. So, and who, and, and just like this. Did you say they play Fisk? They play Fisk, and Fisk just got a band. They don't have a team. They just got the band. They play the exact same schedule. And then on top of that, your school was too scared to play us, so they had to go and play somebody they thought they could beat. Keep it. Stay focused. Stay focused. Don't lose focus. No, no, Tasha. No, that was a great segue, Tasha. Hey, I will give you props that you came back into a lion's den to be on the show on Michigan Ohio State hey, Day and to pick hey, the Buckeyes. Salute to you, day. my brother, for that. Hey. <laughs> That's what this show needs. Now, let's let's move to, to the transition because your boys are in a big-time game as well. Not only is USC in a position to to win out and make the college football playoff. Okay, all right. Now, but, but Notre Dame sits at 13. Oh, 
Zoom, zoom. Y'all want to zoom in on that? Go blue. <laughs> All right. Now, from what we heard, Bo Schembechler actually caught Mike in the delivery room and, and, and cut the umbilical cord. <laughs> so <laughs> well, they, had no, they didn't have social media back then, but that trust me, that happened. Now, Notre Dame is actually not just a bridesmaid tonight. They're sitting at 13 with a, with a win over a top 10 USC. They can put themselves in position to go to a very lofty bowl as well. So there's a lot on the line in this Notre Dame USC game tonight. Cool. The how is Notre Dame look so different now than what we saw earlier in the year? How did, how were they able to turn things around? Well, they got the offensive line fixed and they scaled back on offense. They became a more ball controlled, not allowing pain to throw the ball over the little field. And once they got the offensive line fixed, and then they kind of played a couple of cupcake teams to get things back together. After that Stanford loss, that was very humiliating. That 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 put the program at a bad spot. Mm -hmm. And they got back to basics. They got back to just running the ball, short passes. And I don't think they let them throw more than 20 passes a game. So they copy in Michigan again. I see. Say it again, Mike. They did what? They just copy in Michigan. Yeah, yeah, That's what were, Michigan they were, they did. They had to be they that way the they have quarterback <laughs> or offensive line. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. had they had to scale it back. But I mean, Michigan probably got better players than Notre Dame right now. But uh, so they they scaled it back and it's worked. I mean, it, things look like they work when you when you play Navy, Army, and teams like that. But when we played Clemson and we went in there and just manhandled those guys. That let me know that, that was we, the offensive line was supposed to be the bell the bell cow this year, and they got hurt early, and then we lost the uh, wide receiver, then the quarterback, so everything got jumbled up. But they're they're playing good ball and they're solid on defense. They've always been solid on defense. Isaiah Foskey is one of the top defensive linemen in the nation. Hey, and you see USC has a great one too. Two is something. I don't know how he says last. Two is little blue, whatever his name is, but he's a great one too. But uh. <laughs> I think I think that that'll work. Uh, I think we'll get them today because they're ranked 96th in defense, and that doesn't bode well for West right. And you and UCLA went day. up and down the field on them yeah. last week. And right. so with us not having a real strong offense, and you let us know you like water, oh, we can do that. We can do that. And Mike, we know they're that's, gonna throw the ball every play too. So yeah, they are gonna throw the ball every play. And yeah. great segue because I'm coming to you about the USC quarterback Caleb Williams transfer from Oklahoma. If USC were able to to pull this off today and finish the regular season with just one loss, is Caleb Williams your choice for the Hosman? He's got the numbers. <laughs> I, I would I would say yes. You say no, Tasha Mike. I mean, you still said Blake Corum, right? You said let's see what Blake does. Oh, well, I mean, yeah. I mean, that's what I'm thinking. I mean, but still undefeated, so. Now, I you mean, know, you know this I, is the, the, the quarterback I mean, award, though. Tasha, so what do you think? I mean, I mean, you know, I was pulling for Hendon Hooker, but, you know. Oh, we're going to get to him. We're going to get to him. But I'd take him over that other boy that they're trying to give it to. <laughs> you, just, you just hate for no reason. <laughs> <laughs> There's always a reason, baby. There's always a reason. I, I, I think right. this year they might want to just not even give out a hazard because I haven't seen anybody that's blown Have you away. seen number two in blue? Have you seen number two in blue? I mean, he's, he's a nice running back, but that's not what I call Heisman material. Maybe I'm too old school because, you know, back in the yeah. day when we saw Heisman, yeah. we saw somebody playing ball. Right, somebody to run for 2,500 like Ricky Williams or somebody, right? Right, right. we saw Ron Ron Dane. Dane. This year, hey, cool. like, I get what you're saying. Because I, like, I, I can't disagree. Like and it's it's come over quarterback it only comes down to the quarterbacks now because you, you don't have players putting those type of – Numbers up because Indomitian Sue sh should have been the first defensive, all defensive player to actually win the Heisman, if, in my opinion. You know, Charles Woodson, I do agree with that, but Charles, you know, but Charles Woodson, they were saying he wasn't strictly defensive, yeah, because he did kickoffs and, and uh, all that. But like, like Paul said, it's, it's a quarterback award now, yeah, it is. Now, Mike, let's go to Lincoln Raleigh. If Nick Saban is the best coach in college football, is Lincoln Raleigh number two? I'm a no, no, what are you talking about? Who's number two? Man. Well, it's, he's not even top five. You can put several several coaches above him. Uh, so look, what he's done, I, look at what USC was last year and, and the years prior to his arrival. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, yeah. you have to take a lot of that was recruiting. So he took a lot from um, Oklahoma that came yes. over with him. 
Um, right, but so, he but he recruited them at Oklahoma though, right? Yeah. So I mean, we're really gonna see when USC and UCLA come over to the Big Ten. That's when we'll really see because uh, him what are you going him to succeeding see? in the Pac-12, him succeeding in the Pac-12 is not really showing me anything. The Pac-12 and the Big Ten is gonna be the same, other than you got Michigan and Ohio State. He's just gonna play two more games, like. He's gonna finish third. Yeah, but those are two strong teams. Who is poking that banner day? (laughs) Well, I'm just saying. Those are two strong teams. Third, and it's gonna look like he's doing a great job. Like, like the Cobra, he is. When they come to, but that means that he can't beat those two teams. Like, we're beatable. Offense will because he's gonna turn up to a whole different level of Big Ten. Nah, they're gonna get introduced to the the defense. Gonna come in and 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 get on Harbaugh at Day's level immediately. Is what you're saying? Yeah, because he's going to draw the players, but that style of offense, guys, yeah, may, yeah, that that style of offense may not work when it's tw- uh, twelve below, though. See, right. So he's going to have to start establishing some type of run attack because you can't be going in over there, going to Michigan and Nebraska and playing in those places, and it's eighteen degrees, wind blowing, snow everywhere. See, that works well out west because it's eighty-five degrees every week. Yeah. Right, right. There are no November games where you're in the Rose Bowl playing and it's 80 degrees outside. You're right, like yeah. it was last yeah. week in, in the UCLA in the UCLA game. So, so uh, Tasha, you're you're a prize recruit. You're the number one quarterback in the nation, and you got you 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 put your offers down. And Mike and Coop, I want y'all to chime in too. You've got offer letters from Lincoln Riley, Ryan Day, and Jim Harbaugh. Where are you going to school? I'm going to Harbaugh, and that's not being that's not being biased. I'm not, I'm not being biased, biased with that. I don't think Day is a good coach. I just, like like we said, he got stuff handed to him. Lincoln Riley is, is a good coach. We're not going to take that away from him. But I think it's also circumstance with him. He fell into a good circumstance. You, you, you understand what I'm saying? Right. And NIL allowed him to pick up. Right. And from, from, allowed from, uh, you to Pittsburgh. take the Belitnikoff winner from Pitt. Right. And bring him into your bread basket. You you clean. You just put all them all those recruits in that schooner from Oklahoma and took <laughs> yeah yeah and roll it, roll it on the, the SC. So I think it's circumstance with him. I think if if he had to start at the bare minimum, he would not be as good. I think he's a fraud myself, Mike. Who are you coaching? Who are you going to play for? Harbaugh. Or, or Day or, or Lincoln Riley because they're all going to be in the same conference here soon. Yeah, I would say I would say Harbaugh. Uh, he's a you know ex quarterback, um, quarterback coach. He's he's developed a lot of good quarterbacks. I think you can see it in in the prospects that are looking to come to Michigan too. Another five star looking to come to Michigan here in a couple of years. So I I think a lot of these quarterback young quarterbacks are like, Hey, I like what he's doing with JJ or these younger quarterbacks. Um, you know, he, he worked with Cade, which was like, man, I, we, let's be real. We didn't think he was going to win the big 10 championship. Uh, no. Cade the big 10 championship with Cade is, 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 is being the miracle work. He was Helen Keller. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, he was able to develop him to be like, Hey, this is what your job is. You can't sling it down 60 yards down the field. Let's go ahead and take care of the ball, hand it off, make these first down throws, and then we'll call it a win. Cool. Where who would you play for? I, y'all, y'all amaze me. <laughs> Last year they were about ready to fire. Harbaugh. You say amaze? Now you're telling me he's the best <laughs> coach over those other two. I mean, he was trying to take I the, mean, uh, we he all know why to the NFL because he just knew if he had not beat Ohio State last year, he was going to get fired. Like, Yeah, I would have fired him. So I, I would have called for his job. I would have called for his job. So, yeah, so I, can't, I, was, I can't agree with that. You said, hey, he's this little Buddha LeGras. He's just a jazz. <laughs> Nobody wants to play for him. It's I didn't want to fire him. I just want to note that. No, Mike he, No, he, Mike did he, not want to fire him. That's he, true. No, I, I'm not saying he, you like, get him out of here. what I'm speaking on is the program was ready to get rid of him. Like, what the fans like? <laughs> hey, so hey, I, Lex, I mean, I guess it just depends on what you like. If you want wide open spread offense, I guess you would go with Lincoln Riley. And I mean, Ohio State is what it is. I mean, they're going to land recruits, and you don't have to be the greatest coach to coach at Ohio State. You're going to get all the top players. Right. So they're on autopilot. Yeah, yeah. they're, they're on autopilot. They yeah, 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 yeah. So we we're really not like our T said. 
it's kind of hard to see if he's a if Dave's a good coach because he has so much talent that right. he can all he has to do is win one game, get to the playoffs, and then that's where it shows. I think right. in right. three weeks sure. we'll really know what type of coach he is if he has to go up against a Georgia or a USC in the playoff. And if he right. blows those type of games, then that's when you look at him and say, Yeah, you might not be what we're looking for. Because if Harbaugh loses today and then goes on and makes the playoffs and loses in that game, uh, and then you lost last year, you did so I, I guess it's it's it just depends on what you want and what style you like. But, but to your I, point, Coop, what you were saying about, you know, that was my thing with the quarterbacks that I don't think we were recruiting. It's the quarterbacks we had. My issue with Harbaugh was, if you're supposed to be this quarterback guru, why are you not putting the best talent on the field? It was right almost there. like he was like when they got what's his name? That uh, frustrated me too. From one one from old Pist when he came, he had no business being, you know, the quarterback. And then you had I thought Jay- he was going to be good, Mike. Don't you say nothing? I thought he was going to be good. I did. <laughs> it was so trash. I- I did hey. because I seen him, you know, when they were playing Mississippi State. So I knew. And then I thought he was gonna be good. He and was then awful. you had the, uh, the other, uh, uh, the other JJ, the, the black one who JoJo. Jo- you talking about JoJo? JoJo. I mean, you had him, and I felt like if Harbaugh would have catered the offense around him more, maybe he would not have been as bad. He was but bad too. It, I mean, that's what I was because the offense that's what offense, had, Mike. but that's kind of like we go back to Denar Robinson. They didn't have the offense for Denar Robinson to really succeed the way he was supposed to succeed because they what he was an anomaly. They weren't used to have my favorite Michigan player of all time. Yeah, they they weren't they weren't used 16. to having a quarterback there. Right, y'all. This is I fascinating. You know I can talk college there. football with y'all all. Day long. This is so fascinating. All right, but we got to we got to move on because hey, we, hey, Paul, hold on one second. Look at you. One second. I think what T was saying, it's the hardest thing to do right now is to get a quarterback because the styles that they're playing in high school doesn't fit what Harbaugh and those teams. Everybody's running that spread this, that, and that's not his. So he's having a hard time finding that right quarterback because. He may have to not get a five star to take a three star that plays his style of off. You know what? And then to Mike's and point, coach him up. that might be that might give Harbaugh a couple of notches. Then, if I'm a father of a son that I want to go play pro, that he's going to run a system pro more in line offense. with the bowl game, exactly. and and and, do, and that's why Michigan quarterbacks generally do better yeah. in the NFL. Well, well, the in the quarterbacks in the NFL now. Most of the, the quarterbacks yeah. in the NFL are doing what. What 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 type of offense are they are yep, they running right. now? It's not that that cookie cutter stand in the in you know up under center you know take your three step drop and yeah. pass. A lot of those quarterbacks that they have in the league now are not that. Even the white quarterbacks. Look at Joe Burrow. Joe Burrow is not a stand under the center. He's yeah. a, I'm a, I'm gonna do this shotgun. And he will and he will light you up. Right. Mike's got him playing against me in fantasy this week. I hope you don't have a good night. Um, but but okay. So let's so let's let's transition uh, here. To another quarterback, and that's Hendon Hooker and the UT Vols. Now, Mike, let me start with you. The University of Tennessee season can best be described as blank. Fill in that blank. I would say an accomplishment, but it's also sad because I, I I didn't have them, you know, anywhere near the top five. Right. Um, I think I, I had them maybe. 11 area, 10 area, uh, but I, we've never seen them be as successful as they showed us this season. I think what's sad is, of course, the unfortunate stuff that we can't necessarily predict. Um, Flashing the pan, Shamika? <laughs> <laughs> that's cold. But, uh, Shamika, yeah, that's yeah. cold. Keep going, I Mike. Was, I was just going to say it's sad. and I mean, I, I would like to see if the 100% healthy – you know, would I still put them in the playoffs after they just got routed against Georgia? I wouldn't do that, but they would have a really top bowl to show everyone else what they can do against another conference. And last week against South Carolina was unforgivable. Yeah. I'm sorry, Mama. I love you. Please let me hey, back in the look. house after the show. And but South was Carolina was bullying them, too. I was like, mm-mm. You, you start the game with six straight touchdowns, and we're talking about South Carolina here. Um, 
Now, I, look, we didn't say you was lying, Shamika. We said my mama's right on the other side of this door, and I'm trying to get back <laughs> in there to watch the game. You done locked lock that door now. Right. Said, look, click, click. Look, Mike, I'm, uh, <laughs> hey, Coop, where, where's that bar you sat down the street? I might have to go watch the game down there. Coop, what are your thoughts on how? Yeah, you got to go. <laughs> Excuse me. UT blew a golden opportunity to win out and go to the playoffs. Once, um, once that spot opened up, what what would you describe their season as in one word? Because they did kind of exceed expectations, correct? Yeah, you remember our first week back. Remember, I told you my sleeper team was UT. Me and you spoke on this, and I said UT yeah. will be a decent. They will be better than anybody thinks. I, I I thought they would be right where they're at because I said they will either be either lose one game or two. I thought they would beat. Alabama or Georgia. They got one, and this yeah. South Carolina game was just straight out the wood. But I heard this week uh, on Sports Talk Radio, Jeremy Banks and yes. Hendon Hooker got into a big fight. Yes. And they think the team was divided yes. because they suspended Banks and not Hooker. Yes. So you look how that defense played. They almost laid down. And it said, was almost like, we're well, fine. In one of ours. The, yeah. Uh, like in uh, uh, what was the movie with Denzel Washington? Uh, the uh, Remember the Titans when the when the dude yeah. went block and Red got hurt. Yeah. Uh, hey, it was also in uh, Any Given Sunday when when yeah. uh when Willie Beeman, hey, you forgot your invisible <laughs> juice. Yeah. But yeah. no, but Mike, for, for those that didn't catch that locally, the 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 call the the defensive captain had stepped on the T in the locker room, which is a sacred thing you're not supposed to do. Hendon Hooker approached him about it. They got into fisticuffs, and it was the defensive captain that was left off the off the bus and didn't get to make the trip to South Carolina, and the quarterback did. And it looks like a defensive player said, well, then we're not going to play today because yep. the score indicated that they weren't going to play that day. 63 points to South Carolina. Man, when I woke up and Mike is like, man, Tennessee messy. And saw that, I said, what? I said, wait a minute. But remember, I, I sent you a message, Paul. I said, I said, I said, if Tennessee lose, first I said if Tennessee loses, but then I saw that halftime squad. I was like, no. I said, it's done. It's yeah. done. So Tasha, yeah, you what can't divide. You, know you can't work? divide the locker room. That's for sure. That is for sure. Yeah. So, Tasha, what would you describe? That's what's what making me about? worry about Hypo. I'm worried about Hypo now. Really. And, they repeatedly kept asking him this week what was going on, and he never came out and addressed the situation. So I'm I'm looking at this team like, hey, after today, if they don't show well against Vandy, do those guys get in a transfer portal? Mike, like, Vandy's going to get him work today. He's got going good. Vandy's yeah. going to give them work today with JoJo on the center. We, 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 we scored oh by God. JoJo. Yeah, <laughs> and we've seen hey, JoJo. <laughs> Joe, man, Joe can throw, but he going to throw it all in the stands. Over the <laughs> he ain't hitting nobody in the numbers. It'd be a better opportunity for like, uh, somebody to catch it there. <laughs> well, his mama going to get a silver nail in the stands. Hey, he, overthrew. <laughs> hey, he, he overthrew a dude last week in the end zone so bad. I was like, how do – but his arm yeah. is so great. He has a cannon, thinking, but the cannon is just off the degrees. Dial it down <laughs> right. <laughs> Let me yeah. let me say this on on live on on live right now, Mike. You were right. All right, I defended him, defended him, defended <laughs> him. He went to a new location and did it again. You were right. You were right, Tasha. Are you worried about UT or is this was this just one of those things? I think it's one of those things because I was surprised that Tennessee, you know, did as well as they did this season. It was unexpected, and anybody that says, "Oh, we knew this," you a damn lie. No, that's they, true. They, they're right where they're supposed to be. They, they, they right, right. They seem like they're right. Well, I mean, with the losses, I'm talking about at first being number one. Like that's what right. no yeah. one expected. That they crumbled after getting called number one, though. They crumbled. Yeah, but currently, yeah. uh, you know, what do they have? Two Tennessee is usually a two-three loss team within the past. You know, the past few years, right. they've been a two-three loss team. So they right. are where we thought they would be at this point. Yeah. yeah. That number I one was a setup. Give up on them, though. I would, you know, still say UT has some time. You, yeah. I mean, UT has time. If, I mean, if Hyper leaves, I don't. Th why would you leave something that's already fully stopped? When when Rocky Top is behind you, they behind you, and they're behind him right now. Because you know that is the most hated fight song, and you you know who don't give a damn. 
UT fans. UT fans. They will they will orange your ass out. They will put they will they will fill up your airport, they will fill up your bars, they will fill up your hotels, they will travel. It will be interesting to see if they travel with Joe under center when bowl season comes around because they're gonna get a good bowl game. I think they'll beat Vandy. I think Vandy will cover, but I think they'll beat Vandy. Well, well, I don't I don't know, guys, and this is a big thing. You only have these type of seasons once every five to ten years. They blew a golden opportunity. Yes, Everything they did. Was lined up for them, and everybody keeps saying, "Oh, they're a year a year ahead of schedule." That thing doesn't happen that way. Look at Michigan. If Michigan loses and don't get in the playoff to today, everybody's gonna say it's a disappointing season. You can't I guarantee will. you're gonna get back to these levels of getting in the playoff and have an opportunity to win the national title. They got you Nico know coming in next year, and who it's, it's not a guarantee that you're going to go and win 10, 11 games next year. Everything was set up. You were number one. You were going to backdoor the title. Florida's an down. opportunity for a title. Yes. So, Alabama, yeah. you beat Alabama. You had to. Yeah. Yeah. Right, right. And, and you know the perfect right. example of that is, is Michigan State. Last year, they were set up to be the next it thing. And look at them this year. They, they skating without a stick and no skates. Like, they might not even make a bowl game this year. If they yeah, don't they're on the ice with socks on. Yeah. <laughs> so, everybody, they gave Mel Tuck yeah, almost $100 million. Right, okay. Yeah, you got to so, take advantage of these type of seasons. You can't, you you can't let these seasons. And you, you remember Georgia used to do this all the time. They, they used sure to did. these seasons. They sure and did. And they lost their coach. They had to go get – because they was like, hey – we can't keep losing these type of seasons. Right. Going 11 and 1, losing in the champ- SEC championship game. So you have to take a, a advantage of these opportunities when you get them. Like you see UCF, you remember everybody's, like, oh, yeah, that is. We don't even talk about UCF anymore. Nope. Right. So because you got to take advantage of these seasons. Right. Right. That's you're right. So, so let's, speaking of taking advantage of, I'm loving these segues right now. We got, we we gonna bring up my my, my man Neon Dion Prime Time again. Now we're not gonna revisit the conversation from last week, but y'all, if y'all missed that, go back and watch Tasha T says on the mic square off uh, about Prime Time last week. You talking about hilarity, or or, or, or or find them on the on the reels. But since then we have a new development. Every week there's something going on with Dion. Now <laughs> after Jackson State finishes their first undefeated eleven and zero season in program history, he's now being linked to UCF as Coop just brought up, that went irrelevant. And Colorado State, we're both looking for permission to speak with Dion. Let's play a little multiple choice. I'm coming to you first, Mike. This time next year, Dion will be A, at Jackson State, B, at a smaller D1 school, or C, at a Power 5 school. I think he's going to be at a Power 5 school. Wow. I think someone's going to grab him up, and someone that's – a program that's going down as far as uh, money wise, because we talked about that. How he's going to bring in? How he's bringing down? He's there are they already they they're they already dug their grave. Ten million dollars every year, whatever. Yeah. Nine million dollars every year. That's crazy. Uh, anyways, I I think it's going to be a school that isn't necessarily known for uh, football. And then you all also have the the Ole Miss uh, uh, quarterback or the coach. I mean, and and I was I didn't even think about that. But then he's like, no, no, I, I swear I'm going to be here next year unless something happens. And I'm like, oh, I didn't even think you were leaving. And usually yeah. that only comes up when they're leaving. So when yeah, they're leaving, I was going to say, do you believe a coach? The only time he's telling the truth is when his lips ain't moving. Tasha, Dion will be A, Jackson State, B, small time school, or C, power five school. Where's he going to be next year? He's going to be Jackson State because Shador is just a sophomore. Yeah. Mm hmm. If Shador was a great senior, point, senior, I didn't even think about that. Or getting, you know, looked at if he was a junior and they were talking about, oh, NFL prospect, he'd be gone. He's going to stay there because Shador is only a sophomore. Wow. Coop, you agree? I, that's what I was going to say. I, I, I already know what it is. He would be in Jackson State. For one thing, he can't go to an SEC school because the good old boys. They're not having that shit. Thank you. I'm trying to tell y'all. But I was trying to prove this point, and Steana and hey. Mike and Paul were barking me. And Paul, hey. so I'm with Mike on this. They're they going to take some more with them. That Say booster, it again, that, cool. Hey. I got that, your back, that Mike. Booster money, you can't roll Dion out to the quarterback club on Monday in Starkville, Mississippi, and that's not going to happen because 
He we all will have them, them fellas out there doing the step. <laughs> the only places he can go is ACC school or UCF. He can't go north. He can't go to Colorado State because his charisma does not lend itself to recruiting people to Colorado State, Oakland, Nebraska. He, he is a real black dude. This dude, like young Dolph, and he like gangster. Like he, that does not go well when you're talking about right. Colorado that was Dion. State. North Dakota. He can only go to Florida State, UCF. He ain't going nowhere. It's all a ploy. It's just they're just throwing things on the wall to keep JSU relevant. It, he's leaking Ooh, stuff. He has a great PR team. He ain't going nowhere they, no, listen, where they playing sweet line or don't stop believing he, between the third and fourth. Yeah. Uh, I hate that. Like, like what T says. <laughs> he can only go to a team that's going to let his son quarterback next week. He that's a package deal. He has to take Travis Hunter with him. Yes. So, see, all that stuff got to go. And, and a D1 school said, oh, we already got a Travis Hunter. Oh, we already got a quarterback. We don't, uh, they don't have a Shadour. against Prairie View. Huh? They don't have a Shadour. Uh, you can take Shadour along he, with Dion. Shadour ain't no Steve McNair, and Shadour no. ain't no uh, Doug Williams. Shadour, don't don't, Shadour use, don't pull up my heartstrings with no Steve McNair. Him and Alcorn. That's nothing. <laughs> Soon. Yeah, right. I'm not impressed. <laughs> I saw him against TSU. TSU was trash, and they knocked him around like a ping pong ball. He's okay. He's an average quarterback. Ping, 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 ping. Yeah, but he he can't go to FEC school. That's just his agent trying to push push the agenda to try to get him more money. Yeah, that that, that stuff ain't that stuff ain't flying. Mike, SEC. Mike, we're gonna do the prom time when he get that D one <laughs> opportunity next, and we're gonna oh, yeah. wait for them both to be on the show. So we can do yeah. our step, and if he stay at Jackson State, we are gonna let them do their step. He also has so, a lot of Texas Texas ties too. So, hey, he's he was big. right down the road from us. So. You know, yeah. Mike lived right down the street from Prime Time. Where are you going, Texas? He oh, need to go no, to the. I Aggie. don't know. I was just he saying, like, like you got a lot of connections. The University of or the agricultural and mechanical. <laughs> hey, nice. Nobody knows what SMU. Imagine, hey, imagine that, the Pony that Express the money again. It's too long. Those people run everything. SMU, I love it, Mike. SMU, I, they got Mordecai bringing Shador it, behind him. Now he I can, can, he can do something like an SMU, but he can't go to the SEC. Them good old boys but, ain't going with that. But the thing is, that's two big personalities. You got prime time, and then you got old uh, Gerald Wayne Jones <laughs> in Dallas. That's too. That's too many. Too many. Nobody want to talk about him. Mm-hmm. Now, Martrice, back to prime prep. Don't you do that, Buckeye fan. Don't do that. Don't send that man back to prime prep. We got, we got, we got we getting out of DR right now. Y'all hurt my feelings with that. Trees, prime prep. Oh, my God. All right. So, let's squeeze in a little football before the show's over because we know today is, is, is all about college footballs. But let's sneak in a little NFL because we do have one big AFC matchup on the slate. The rematch of last year's division around AFC playoff game between Cincinnati and Tennessee. Now, Coop, you've been listening to Sports Talk Radio all week here locally. Mike Rabel has told anybody who would listen, anybody with a microphone to his mouth, that this is not a revenge game. Is he lying? Of course. I mean, he has to say that because he's still worried about his quarterback psyche. <laughs> so he doesn't want to oh. press his quarterback too much. To thinking he has to go out here and prove something to the whole world, but which is what everybody, he does. everybody in Nissan Stadium is looking like this, oh. right? The double eyeball <laughs> emoji. Oh, mm-hmm. one of your ass. Everybody in Nissan Stadium Sunday, like, mm-hmm. do it if you want to. <laughs> are they gonna, are they gonna boo that man? Throw it if you want to. Throw interception if you want to in this game. So it's so much pressure on him that it's crazy how much pressure is on Tannehill. The demons yes. are in him, and he's been playing well the last two weeks. I got to give him his props. Yeah, he's looked good, man. He's looked good. He's See, Langston is feeling real good. He could. Right, the Cowboys are rolling right now, so Langston's feeling real good taking the Bengals. Don't put your money in Vegas. You go, don't don't lose your money right there. Now, Mike, Langston is not we, playing. Langston is not playing right, either right. for Bengals. Okay, all right. So, Mike, Cincinnati's second in the NFL in scoring offense. 26 points a game. Tennessee's defense has the longest streak of keeping opponents under 20 points in seven games in a row. Who do you yeah. trust more on Sunday, Cincinnati's offense or Tennessee's defense? 
I'm going to go with the uh, Titans defense. Just, I mean, I will say that I have seen more of them than the Bengals. Um, so I will. Right. That's been the only special that. team look. Yeah. So, uh, but they have like, man, we were talking about what the, the end or the beginning of the season when you were asking all of us. And I was like, if they're going to be able to go to the playoff, their defense has to change. And I mean, right. their defense has, has come alive the last couple of weeks or like you said, the seven weeks. But I specifically saw a difference in the last, I would say, four weeks. You can definitely see, like, you right, can start count on the City. Titans' defense. Mm -hmm. You can count on the Titans' defense to stop someone in crucial time. So I'm going to take the Titans' defense. Uh, Tasha, is, but, it, what happens with Tannehill if, if he has a repeat performance against Cincinnati? They still going to try this little ass right on back out there. <laughs> They're going to just start letting Malik, what you talking about, Willis, warm up just a little bit. I mean, I don't do, know why do they Nashville thought fans boo? I don't know. I mean, I don't know why y'all. Really? I'm going to boo. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why y'all thought y'all was going to get anything different. He was the same in, in Miami. And he's, as, as he, I mean, he's the same in Tennessee as he was in Miami. So why is, you know, why is anybody surprised at how he plays? Good point, Coop. Why is anybody surprised about how he plays? If it was not for Derrick Henry, he would not have that money. And if it was not for that Titans, That's defense, true. they wouldn't be ready. Yeah. yeah. Well, you got to hang your hat on something. If it wasn't for Kansas City's offense, they wouldn't be relevant. Don't do us like that, Tasha. No, I'm sensitive right now. The Kansas City defense ain't no lame duck. That's true. But he That's has true. played better in, in, in Tennessee than he yeah. did in Miami. I will say Right. That. We don't yeah. move around here. We throw that hot chicken at your ass. <laughs> So Andy, put the chicken, chicken emoji. <laughs> <That's good> chicken. <laughs> all right. Um, all right. So, who you got, Tasha? Since they do, do, are they, do they do it again, or does Titans get it done this time? I just don't see. I mean, but again, how do we always say this is a game they could lose? This would be a game the Titans would get out there and just be like, eh. And they, they, they do it at home more than on the road, too. They, they show up smaller oh. on, at home than on the yeah. road, which right. is baffling but to me. Purposes, yeah. uh, the Titans should win this game. They should. So I'm, I'm going to go for the Titans. Vegas says no. <laughs> cool. Who you got in this one, Cincy or Tennessee? Man, I'm worried about this game only because we I'm play Philly about next game. week. And this game is the bigger game. And I hope that they're not worried about AJ next week so much that they put up a stinker because they – they played so well last Thursday. It was the best game of the season by far. Yeah, I mean, they looked complete last week. And then that's when the Titans come back with a dud. It is. I'm, I'm going it to is. the guys in a, in a, uh, in a nail biter at the uh, old Fat Randy with a field goal at the end. But <laughs> that's I, Randy Bullock the kicker for y'all. Fat Randy is going to kick one at the end. Mike, who you going with in this rematch? I got the Titans, but I, I'm also surprised in um, Vegas picking the Bengals by two and a half, it looks like. Uh, well, they so know what we're being cool, though. They know what we're being cool, We, we yeah. play some really five at home. <laughs> yeah, so that's really five five points. So you, yeah. you, so you want to round it up. Let's call it a touchdown. Um, so I, mean, <laughs> I think it's going to be a close game. Yeah. I think it's going to be about – I'm sorry. Go ahead, Mike. It's going to be – I think it's going to come down to the end, the last series. It's going to be about a four-point mm -hmm. difference, like, I don't know, 27-23, and it's going to come down to the Titans' defense. you got to be able to stop them. Thank you. you. got to be able to because yeah. Joe did what he wanted and, to. Uh, Titans get second on time and still be the team. Yeah. <laughs> All right. See, sis, it's time for some shout-outs. Who are you shouting out today? I'm shouting out, and I left my shirt upstairs. I am shouting out those clanga clanga bulldogs down there in Starksville, Mississippi State, Octavia County bulldogs. They upset coach, hit it and quit it. <laughs> in the, in, in the, in the, the gold egg bowl trophy. Back oh, you won the egg bowl. Yeah. Today, nice. Oh, yeah. Today, Kiff and gone. Kiff and gone. Today is played where it belongs. So, yeah, shouts out to those Mississippi State Bulldogs. All right, nice win. Cool. Who you shouting out this week? Hey, my shout out goes out to Nashville, Tennessee. 
USC last night. East East uh, High School, uh, yes. Magnet, whatever it is, and Pearl Cone both qualified for the state championship. Yes. I got to believe that's the first time in history that two Metro Nashville teams have gone to the state at the same time. So all that bad press, while them news people, they better go out to them kids' school and rep them kids up before next week. Shout out to East and Pearl Cone for doing their thing. East is going to the state championship game in back-to-back seasons. That has never happened other than when Pearl did it with uh, Santonio now. With Santonio yeah, Pearl. Back Do the fiber, so, Tasha. Do the fiber. Yeah. We back. Shout we back. out to them, and let's, let's keep, uh, keep rolling. Yeah, let's keep rolling all the way to the state. Mike, who are you shouting out this week? I got a U.S. men's soccer. They did not lose against uh, England when they were supposed to. Uh, fun fact, actually, uh, U.S. has never lost to England uh, in World Cup. So, shout out. Nice. Keep it going, USA. Let's let's uh, get into the knockout round. Yes, Damn. great job. Nashville, Tennessee. It feels so good to be back home. Can I give a shout out to Nashville, Tennessee, for always welcoming your boy back home. Shouts out to, the, to, to y'all for always being there and for a great, great show, some great content today. Now, I don't know about y'all. But I'm about to eat the last scrapes of this macaroni and cheese and these this leftover dressing. And I'm about to get ready to whoop some some suck eye, you know what. So you know how we get down. Look, and, and after that, don't go nowhere. Get your power nap in and come right back to the tube for Notre Dame and USC tonight, because there's a lot on the line with that one as well. We got some big games on tap. You know how we do. We'll see you in six days in about 23 hours or so. Until then, Mike, what they gotta do? Go blue. Boom. But wait, I had another Let's shout go out. Irish. Let's go oh, Irish. That was the Look. perfect walk off with the go blue. Who's the shout out? Look, we got to shout out Daniel Snyder for leaking that photo of Jerry Jones. Oh, you know what? Stop it. Uh, we, we got we out of here. We you know we did it. He's guilty. We almost got rid of We almost got rid of it. <laughs> it we need that when ain't no games, though. Uh, we'll see. Uh, I was there. And, uh, <laughs> no, I, 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 I was there, but, uh, you know, my coach <laughs> was and, uh, I was just curious. I didn't he said, want to. none of us anything. know what was and, uh, going on. Why the hell you didn't? <laughs> he thought it was a pep rally. He said he thought yeah. it was the Tiger Bells coming in from TSU. <laughs> we out of here, y'all. Hold on, Jerry. <laughs> Hey, they all calling him the N-word, and they talking about, I didn't know what was going on. I was just a curious 14 year Hey, y'all apologize to my mama so I can get back in the house about talking about UT. She said she's a little soft <laughs> at, at y'all. We, Let me back saw, in, mama. Sorry, mama. We sorry, mama. <laughs> well, 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 well. <laughs> she like, right, we'll see y'all next week. <laughs> yes, sir. Y'all have a great <laughs> Oh, let me in, mama. 